You were fired? Yeah, I was fired. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shot fired. <laughs> Hello. All right, so we have already filmed one episode, just for you guys who wonder how podcasts work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're on a second one right now, and I'm just going to kick into it. I'm not even going to do an intro on this one. Do you have any idea how I know who you are? I don't, actually. I don't know how we originally <laughs> connected. It's been so long. What would be your best guess? It's got to be a friend of a friend. And it's definitely social media, but I also feel like it may be church, like a church thing. I don't know. No. So, Quayshawn Duval. Quayshawn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So he. Um, so I met Quay at church in Hot Springs. Yeah. Um, at a church camp, and he. Right after I met him, very shortly after, I started getting into video and photo, and um. He was like, dude, here's the best person I know who does this. And it was <laughs> you. So I went and followed you. Uh-huh. And um, honestly, I want to, I don't remember it distinctly because this was back. Th- specifically, what I'm talking about was in 2013. Yeah. So um, maybe, so I improved, like I got better in my craft. And I think shortly, and then I grew my following quite a bit too. And mm. I think right after that, you followed me back, and then it became more of a, like, social media mutual thing. And then because um, Arkansas is so small, mm. we ended up having a lot of, like, people that we both knew as creatives come in contact. Right. Yeah. Right. But I was actually looking through some of our mutuals right this morning, and, um, like, a lot of them are, like, yeah, just mutual creatives. Mm. Um, whether from a coffee shop. Um, or like photo video. I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's, man, that is interesting. Yeah. I haven't seen, I used to play basketball at Quay all the time. We, uh, we played it. It's in Northgate. It's a, it's a directional gate of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Southgate, Northgate, one of those gates. Uh, yeah. Wow. Shout out to Quay. What a guy. Cause I definitely was not, a master of any craft in 2013, so that is <laughs> really generous of him to say. Um, yeah, I remember him showing yeah. me, like, uh, he was like, dude, this guy, he does all this, like, cool stuff. He's like, I can connect you with him if you want. <laughs> and um, I was like, dude, that'd be dope. I don't think yeah. he ever, like, connected us, but I just went mm. and followed you on social media because he showed me your Instagram right, right. then. But also on that note, so you talked last podcast about, uh, or last episode about your, like your kind of your fitness journey. Mm. I definitely have recognized that over social media, like passively. Um, I don't think, you, to me, as an outsider, you never looked overweight. Mm. Um, you looked like, honestly, I know it sounds bad, especially for like a white male from Hot Springs in Arkansas. <laughs> They're right. typically more round. <laughs> right, right. We got some big fellas, for sure. Shout out Hot Springs. <laughs> um, but you weren't, especially in comparison yeah. to a lot of those guys, you weren't very big to me. But over the years, I'm like, dang, dude, this dude's slimming down. And then eventually, <laughs> once you posted that profile, I was like, oh, okay. Mm. He's he's actually, like, working out or doing something. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So, like, by the time that I would have known Quay... Um, I still know Quay. Quay's a good guy, but I don't see Quay anymore. He's married. He's got his own things. I, I know. I want to see Quay. Quay, if you're watching this, yeah, let's Quay. hang out, buddy. I'll send this to you <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, around the time, like uh, sophomore year of high school into sophomore year of college, I was consistently like 185, which at like six six one, my frame, like it's, I feel is pretty slim. Um, but like my whole family's like barrel chested guys so we're all big chest yeah i don't don't know it's it's interesting um and then uh i guess it is really just when i stopped playing basketball every day because that's all i did was just play basketball all day every day one time um (laughs) for like a few months 
and it was very like white men can't jump <laughs> type of thing. Like I barely got it and I got super excited about it yeah. and it was a big deal. And then I did it one time in a pickup game at like... Wait, you uh, dunked in a pickup game? Yeah, that, okay, was, that was a big deal. That's legit. <laughs> it was on a breakaway. It was on a breakaway. I had a lot of like, uh, <laughs> a, a lot of build up to it because I, I, I'm very good at like stealing the ball, especially on like cross court passes like yeah. i feel like i can see them coming and so i'll steal them i have a lot of breakaways and there was just one time i was just feeling i was like i'm gonna go for it and um yeah it worked out it was not like an impressive dunk it like it was one of those where like i got it i got my hand over the rim and it like bounced in the rim and then went down it wasn't yeah, like yeah, a yeah. slam or anything but it it felt amazing it was one of my greatest Dude, accomplishments <laughs> i'm never nope never dunk. i can uh, dunk. you believe that <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five four for those watching, uh, and I'll put a video up for you. A few of them. Can you? Yeah. Can you really? Yeah, two hands. That's awesome. <laughs> what are we? <laughs> that's some that's some spud web right there. That is impressive. Yeah. It's, I feel like honestly though, nowadays because of TikTok, like mm. it's not that impressive. It used to be very very impressive, There's but kids, now it's yeah. kids nowadays, man. Dude. I'm talking. They're just so talented. They they dunk like they're six six and yeah. they're literally five four. Yep. I mean flying it blows my mind. through the air. So like you see that more and more often mm -hmm. to where it's like, oh, you can dunk. Yeah. So can my other friend who's like yeah. five three. You know. There are eleven year old AAU teams that I think would rival early NBA championship teams. Like Crazy. they would just destroy them. It, it's insane how yeah. far. The talent of sports has come in, I mean, even let's just say 100 years. Yeah. The, the talent of sports is just on an insane level that I never thought really was humanly possible. I think it's because of the resources available now through, yeah. through um, just like the internet. Like you can go and get really free, high class advice mm. for, I mean, I mean, for free yeah. from like um, world class athletes, world class coaches. Rather that's through YouTube and they're making their cut, you know, through sponsors or affiliate, whatever, you know, or selling your programs. And that's mm -hmm. why you're getting that. But it's just so much of it out there, especially like with these, you know, athletes giving back nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, it just I believe that's really the reason. And then the other thing, too, is you just see more. Like, right. for instance, back in the day, like without social media or the Internet, you know, you would just go up to the rim and just try to like people would just try to throw the ball in mm -hmm. then eventually they got a little creative because they saw somebody in the nba game try an alley hoop mm -hmm. and then they you know and so but now you see every dunk every option available within like a scroll and so right you can begin to say oh what if i mix this with this you know and then created a new move yeah it's just, it's way easier. It's incredible. However, I will say the oversaturation of creativity, I I wouldn't say ruin, has ruined some things, but yeah. I think it has ruined our expectations because like the, the number one thing that comes to mind for me is the dunk contest. Mm. The dunk contest in the NBA now is disappointing mm -hmm. every single year because mm -hmm. there's only so many dunks you can do. Yeah. And the last one that I saw that blew my mind was Blake Griffin jumping over a Kia Optima. That yeah. was incredible. Yeah. And since then, the only dunks that have impressed me are dunks from like random influencers that you'll see, like that that one random white guy with like the pink blue, hair yeah, yeah, or yeah. blue hair, so yeah, whatever he had. He's 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 down where I am, and okay. my my friends know who he. They said like basically if you want to go like do content with him, like mm -hmm. we can hook you up. But yeah, he's I. He either lives down in Texas or something, or he comes down there a lot. I don't yeah. know, something like. But yeah, he's incredible, he's nuts. Yeah, but dude, come on. This year though, that guy was what? You're talking about Mac, Mac McClung. To me, he year. was absolutely nuts. <laughs> like he's he's not big, right? And he was doing like it wasn't even like these were very difficult dunks. He was doing in one try. Yeah, like nuts. I think I think I have like a uh, a bias against Mac McClung because he was like him specifically. He was highly rated coming out of high school. He had a big old he had, he had yeah. the whole dunk mixtape coming out, and he was a big deal. And then Arkansas tried recruiting him. He went to Texas Tech. Uh, we, we ended up beating them. <laughs> 
on our on our way to a an elite eight, okay. which I'm very proud of. And uh, shout out Devo Davis, absolute lockdown clamps on Mac uh-huh. McClung that game. It was incredible. So I have a little bit of a bias against Mac McClung. Not to say that what he did wasn't impressive yeah, yeah. because it was, but yeah. that's probably why. <laughs> on that note, though, so what is your relationship like with Arkansas? Because I never knew like if you actually worked or shot for them. I know mm. you would do. I would see you obviously <laughs> at every game it seemed like <laughs> but i know I, sometime i would see if you with a camera um did you ever shoot or did you no so I, I never had an opportunity to shoot like with the university uh anything like that i've gone to a lot of games especially when i was living in atlanta um i guess i, I had a lot more resources in atlanta and i uh, thankfully was in the heart of the sec and so a lot of the arkansas away games were uh, relatively near me uh, especially like georgia games florida games tennessee games like i could i could all travel uh, to to all of those places comfortably and and go to those games which was really great because a lot of those games were really impressive and a lot of fun and get to see a lot of the the places i'd never been before um i've never shot for the university i would have loved to back in the day. Now, the the guys that they have that that do their their content, they're much more talented than I am. They're and nuts, dude. They're incredible, and they're I, I love watching their content. But do you know any of them? So I I've shot with one of them, and his name is escaping me right now. But he does the basketball stuff. Yeah, um, and he is incredibly talented. I actually thought that he did their football stuff too because the style looks exactly the same, but. I just recently learned it was actually just put this past week when they put out their hype video that it, they have a different guy, but he's just as talented. So yeah, um, yeah, I would have loved to back in the day because I think it would have been a really great um, learning experience. I shot for my university. That was part of where I started out with photography very early on. Uh, Ar- yeah, Arkansas so, Tech University. Yeah, start there and yeah. then go all the way back to for like how. I wanted to dive into how you got started overall. Yeah, so... What uh, year was this? What camera did you get? Right. So the first camera that I ever started doing, like, any sort of photography, videography with was actually a GoPro. Um, Wow. Yes. Very, very long time ago. Um, I believe that was 2014, maybe even late 2013. Dude, come on now. That's not that far away. It's... (laughs) I graduated high school 2012, and... My uh, my ten year graduation was a year and a half ago, which is just shocking. I'm to 2016. Me. That's not that. Crazy. <laughs> it feels pretty far ago. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, uh, my ex girlfriend, who I'm still friends with, shout out Kelsey, got <laughs> got me a GoPro for my birthday. Very very sweet of her. She knew that I I liked doing like action sports style yeah. stuff and going hiking and. Um, I was a bit of a daredevil back then. And so the GoPro was the perfect camera for me. Um, we had not really reached the point where DSLRs were like super affordable yet. They, we had like the Canon Rebel lineup, which is eventually what I ended up starting with when I switched over to DSLR and started taking more pictures. But the GoPro was perfect for me. Um, I had a, a selfie stick, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anytime I wanted to get a shot of me, I would just hold it out there and just kind of face it back towards me. And I, I, I laugh back looking at it now, and it's it's kind of funny, kind of cringe. But yeah, yeah. I, I look back at it in like a reminiscent kind of way. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And um, GoPro makes an incredible camera for uh, such a compact size. And I mean, their their owner creator is a billionaire. He was on Shark Tank, so oh, you sick. know that GoPro is is the real deal for a lot of people, and it's exactly what you know. Some like, especially like the action extreme sports, like that's what you need. And I still use my GoPro for snowboarding all the time. But dude, I've never been snowboarding. Still. So much fun, gosh, so much fun. But it's expensive. I know. I want to go. Ex- so it's very expensive. Bad. Uh, yeah. I skate, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, there was something I was about to ask you, dude. I'm being a terrible host. What was my question? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So what was your first paid gig and when was it? And how much was it, if you can remember? So I I got I got my first like photography job working for the school. And that was as like a school photographer. And I did that for a semester until I was actually fired, which is a funny story. You were fired? Yeah, I was fired. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shot fired. <laughs> Hold up. So, Wait, what? So, like, how, uh, you, 
you're talking university, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so Liz Goodman, who is an incredible photographer, and yeah. she is the, the she is uh, Green Shoes Photography. I think I think it's still her handle. Uh, at least it was on Facebook. I don't know if she's changed it, but it's Liz Goodman, incredible photographer, incredible teacher, incredible mentor, and a wonderful person all around. I yeah. still love her, admire her. Uh, she fired me at the end, towards the end of the semester, but in the nicest way possible. And I absolutely deserved it because <laughs> I was so focused on, um, on doing so many of my like wildlife landscape mm. and like portraiture photography that I ended up getting a little bit behind on the actual like sports and events type mm. of photography that I was, uh, doing with the school and I remember turning in this um, this gallery of photos. I think it was from like a flag football event or something. I got there late because I was editing my photos from a sunrise that morning, and I was so tired. I took a nap. I woke up late. Mm -hmm. I got over there. I took some photos at the very end of the event, and it wasn't very good. They were they were not really well done, and I rushed them to the edit so that they could be posted quickly. And there was just like a string of events like that. And like she knew that I was like, because by that point, I had gotten a sponsorship with a local um, clothing company and I was doing a lot of work for them too. So it was really just like I was overwhelming myself on top of like schoolwork that I had as well. And so um, mm. she let me go. And it was the, it was the right decision, honestly. <laughs> and like she she uh, sh she did not do it maliciously, in it, like in any way. Yeah, like yeah. I I needed to be let go, and it freed me up to do so many things. Because I I am not I just can't quit a job. I'm so bad at quitting. Just yeah. like I'm bad at quitting relationships. I should break up uh. with people sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I can make this work. I can do it. And yeah, then yeah. it ends up not working out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, no, it was it was the right call. Uh, shout out to Liz; she's a great boss as well, yeah, yeah. Um, and she has been so helpful and supportive and encouraging throughout my entire like photographic career. Ever yeah. since then, uh, I love Liz, and I'm glad that she fired me. <laughs> <laughs> so photography is always interesting to me because there are people who can make like do like so much money, and then there's some who like it's more about the quantity than the bigger price. That makes sense? Right, yeah. Yeah, so what was your highest paying gig you ever done? And how much was it? Highest paying gig, man. Um, hmm. He has, to, he has to think through all the zeros. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> the zeros before the first number. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I feel like I have a lot that are in like the like the eight to ten thousand range. I don't really have many that are above that. Um, that was really my sweet spot right there. Um, I did For like weddings or something or commercial. No, more like. Um, more like collaborative sponsorship deals. Weddings were more in like the the two to five range, yeah, depending yeah. on like where I was starting. I really did not enjoy weddings. Um, no one I, does. It's just, <laughs> it's very high <laughs> pressure, sorry, high stakes. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I know there's some wedding photographers The people that do wedding me. photography yeah, are, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh, they have so much willpower and I have so much respect for them because yeah, for sure. it is a, a day full of moments that are there and gone yep. like that. And if you don't capture them, yep. someone is upset. Yep. Usually the mother of the bride yep. or the bride that herself. And you never know really what situation fair. you're going to get into. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, so sponsored, sponsored, sponsored collaborative. What do you mean by those? So I had uh, a number of companies that would, support me financially and also provide me with gear over the few years that I was like traveling and uh, photographing like the national parks, stuff like that. And a lot of them while financially, financially supporting me would also give me just some insane gear and um, tools about? to work out. The, the one that comes to mind the most, uh, probably the most, I, I don't know if lucrative is the word, but the most, supportive was um oh, what's mountain oh, 
the the name is. I was hoping that as I was saying it, the name was going to come to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. They're in Arkansas. They're Arkansas brand. No, they're not Arkansas based. They 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 work with Walmart. You can buy them at Walmart. It's um, um, I think I know what you're talking about. It's a food. Um, I'm gonna look it up real quick because it because that's gonna bother me because I I want like they've done so much for me. I'm leaving this in, by the way. I'm not cutting Mountain it. House. That's what it is. Okay. So Mountain House, which is I don't I don't think they're freeze dried, but they're they're like ready to go bags. You know, you know, like an MRE yeah. meals ready to eat. So it's yeah. ki- it's kind of like that, but they have a much better um setup for it. But you can find these in Walmart, um, in like the hiking camping area. And they're bags that essentially you're heating you're you're boiling like a cup two cups of water and you're pouring it into this bag that's designed to cook that that meal that's already pre-prepared and in just a few minutes you've got a full meal um and it's actually delicious and it's very very nutritious most of them um are really great for you they even have like dessert bags which is really cool they have like ice cream that you can like make it's it's actually really fascinating that's crazy but um i reached out to them and this was like this was the initial collaboration this wasn't yeah. even like i'm excited to hear about going this. into it yeah i just reached out to them because i was doing a three-week road trip with nine other people hmm. three weeks is too long on the road <laughs> by the way with <laughs> 10 people two weeks is the sweet spot um but i reached out to them i told them I told them about this trip and you know i was really excited about it i had a, a, several other sponsors already and it was going really well and they're like sure we got you like what's your address we'll send you some and i was like expecting like maybe like 10 bags or something like that, you know, to get us started. The day before the trip, there were two massive boxes. And when I say massive, I mean like massive boxes that showed up at my front doorstep. And inside were a ton of smaller boxes that were still like this. But in each of those boxes were 10 bags. And there were like 50 of those boxes to the big box. So like a hundred boxes of 10 bags. I'm gonna let y'all do the math on that one. That's nuts. That was the first collab that I did with that company. And my God, I cannot refer them enough to people because they are incredible. They are a wonderful company to work with and their food is delicious. And it's, Dude, it's so, it, I think the greatest thing about it is that it's lightweight yeah, yeah. and it only requires water. That's, I mean, that's all yeah. you need is just boiled water to pour into the bag and it's ready to go. And I love it. Beef stroganoff and their breakfast, um, mash, two of my favorite flavors. They're really, really good. So good. Dude, that's they have crazy. a lot of great. So that's, that's probably my biggest one because I did the math on it one. I don't remember what the number was, but we did the math on it, just like how much each bag cost times yeah. how many bags they got me. And that alone at that point in time was my like biggest deal. Hmm. Like the the most money, you know, supplies involved that a company had invested in me up to that point. And it was incredible. Yeah. I really appreciated them just thinking that highly of me to to make an investment like that in in that trip and it saved us because man uh three weeks ten people that's a lot of food yeah and yeah, yeah. uh and it was really great having that to uh you know one less thing to worry about yeah i'm so. sure that boosted your uh just kind of how you felt as a creator too like you know like this brand believes in what i'm doing enough to send me anything right you know right. like a well-known brand mm-hmm. and then so did you like that just kind of trickled and you got other like, you know, brands here and there to also do things as well. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's really good to kind of parlay sponsorships into other sponsorships, showing, showing companies that established companies believe in you, you yeah, know, yeah. that, that you have partnerships, existing partnerships already. It really helps them. Um, it helps provide like a tangibility to your, um, I don't know, I guess your, your character, your, uh, you know, also your resume. It's really what you're showing people. And um, once once I got the first few, you know, dominoes, they they started knocking over pretty easy after that. Um, hmm. it, it helped that I had kind of a portfolio to work with and show them like, hey, these are shots that I've, you know, taken for companies in the past and they've used yeah. online. 
Um, it's very difficult getting numbers for posts like that because while companies can be very supportive, getting numbers to help you know boost your stuff for later on, it, it can be difficult if you don't negotiate that um, on the front end of partnerships and mm. things things you learn as you go on. You know yeah. things that I didn't know early on that I, I wish I had known. Um, getting numbers can be really important for for some other companies when you want to start a partnership, they want to have numbers to, yeah, to sure. show that, you know, you've actually made an impact. But other than that, yeah. Uh, once you have deals, it's, it's easy to get more deals. It's, uh, it's kind of like, you know, your first million. I, I I've never made a million, but yeah, yeah. people who have millions, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> people, people who have millions, they say the first one's the toughest. And after that, it's, it's pretty easy. I believe them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Guys. I know you're so sad because you're loving what he's saying, but I got to cut <laughs> this one short. Um, the Hogs are playing, and unfortunately, I'm staying right across the street from them, and I have friends and guests coming over to meet us and hang out, and so it's going to take me a while to get in. <laughs> it's pretty rowdy over there. <laughs> but a lot thank, of Hawk fans. Thank you for uh, joining for, what, number two? Number two. Um, if you guys want more, I mean, I'm in Texas. He's in Arkansas. So we could do some more <laughs> virtual episodes if you want. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. But where can I follow you? Uh, Instagram. Uh, as much as I talked poorly on Instagram in our first episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instagram will probably still be the best one. Amateur Jordan, all it is. Um, yeah. Follow me. I'll follow you back. I hate saying that, but I love connecting with new people. <laughs> 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 all right peace thank you guys for watching if you are interested in our first episode which was amazing you should work you should watch you should check it out that's what i'm trying to say right over here <laughs>